Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of This Is Hate CD. Today on the show, we have a very special guest, Molly of Irish with Molly Instagram fame. Now, Molly is from Dublin and has been on a mission to spread the love of my native language, Irish, or as we say in Ireland, Gaelga. But to give you a very brief background on our history in Ireland, we spoke Irish up until the British rule, and it wasn't until the early 1900s and 1916 that we regained our independence, but we never regained our native tongue fully. It's now spoken only in parts in Ireland, and even though it is mandatory in schools, many in my generation really had little or no appreciation of its beauty. Now Molly's gifted me access to her courses, and I'm about to start taking her courses, so who knows you might start to hear me weave a few words here and there into the podcast. So why is this important and fitting for This Is Hate CD? Well, hear me out. It struck me one day as I was scrolling through Instagram that Molly was a fantastic example of what I refer to on this podcast as a change maker. She saw a problem with how Irish is being taught and believes that we as adults still have the power to reintroduce this language. So she did something about it. She is making a huge difference with over 120,000 subscribers to her on Instagram and with no signs of this slowing down. I really wanted to chat a little bit more openly about what is behind all of this and what we can learn as change makers and reintroduce it into our own practice. It's a cracking episode, so let's jump straight in. You're more than able to speak, Molly. Um, you know, I feel like I know you at this stage, which is that open. <laughs> A problem with social media where you feel like you know someone when you don't really know them but i get you you know i've been following you for um probably about a year i suppose online and i was intrigued about a new use of instagram and how to uh, introduce people to the irish language and i can see people from all over the world learning about our wonderful native tongue but i guess why i'm really interested in this is the kind of get the retention of people's cultures and how uh, the proliferation of uh, social media and Netflix and all of these things, you're seeing a dilution of native tongues and a kind of a, a westernized language of English. So um, mm-hmm. when we were in uh, Australia, we used to hear children in Australia with kind of an American twang. They used to say things like, it was awesome. And words that started to come back, and I could see it in Ireland as well. So maybe start off. We'll we'll have a little chat and tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and what you do. Yeah. So um, it's Misha Molly. I'm Molly. I'm from yeah. Dublin, and I'm an online Irish teacher. I have an Instagram account called Irish with Molly, which I set up yeah. about a year ago. Right. And I've been teaching online for about. 10 years more or less and I'm an English teacher Irish teacher and dance teacher but now pretty much all my energy is channeled into keeping our wonderful language alive growing the community creating content materials doing webinars and making these reels where I get to indulge my dork and just go deep into like Irish mythology and etymology and you know really unearth the links between Hiberno-English and how we speak English in Ireland and its link with our native language. So it's been a really beautiful and fulfilling journey. I never imagined I'd be an Irish teacher. You know, everyone kind of seemed to hate their Irish teacher. And I get a lot of, oh, if you were my Irish teacher at school, I'd I'd probably still be there. (laughs) Or like, I'd be fluent in Irish. And I'm like, you know, you can start now. The thing is, people associate Irish with school and with a subject, not with a living language. Yeah. People really believe, oh, I would have, you know, I would have learned Irish as if Irish learning stops at age 18 because the point of it was for the leaving cert, which is something I'd like to just. Yeah, challenge. It's that part, you know, yeah. It's true. Like it was kind of drilled into us as kids to uh, kind of learn this stuff. And we were like, I just didn't have. I didn't understand it because I was like, why am I learning this? We speak English. And exactly. every, all the other lessons were done through English as well. So it was like, I have to turn on a part of my brain that I just didn't really want to turn on. I didn't see the purpose of it. Like, you know. I get you, um, yeah. It, it's interesting that uh, there has been a revival. When we were at school, like I'm giving my age away here. I'm 43, everyone. I don't really hide my age. 
But I remember TG Cahar came on, which is a, a channel in Ireland. It would have been in 95 or 96. And we were like, all these TV shows are in Irish. And it was, it was kind of like, oh, they're being overdubbed. And it, di- it definitely helped just having it on in the background and listening to it. And it's a similar thing that I see happening with what you're doing on Instagram. I see you're given bite-sized pieces of content um, and people are able to learn pretty much asynchronously. But what I want to understand, first of all, before we get into all the, the good stuff, is why is this so interesting to you? It's a great question. Um, it's funny because... What happened? Yeah. <laughs> you know how things make sense backwards? You don't really... Well, I'm not a person who plans my life going forward. I do believe in visualization and really being grateful for what you want to have before yeah. you actually achieve it. But... It makes sense backwards when I think I have always loved language and communication and I studied English studies mm. and I, I think one of my biggest goals in life was to travel and I sailed yeah. around the world about six years ago on a UN sponsored NGO cruise ship called the Peace Boat what? and it is as magical as it sounds and there were about 900 Japanese students. And I thought they were of university going age. You know, I was 25. They were all in their mid to late eighties. And I would actually have to like help them into the cabin for my classroom. And we were, I was teaching Zumba and English. And when they figured out, oh, she's Irish, they were like, let's do Irish dancing. So we did the walls of Limerick. We practiced every day. And I taught them a bit of Irish as well. And their mindset is just phenomenal. Like, yeah, They are so committed, really put in the time, very open-minded about, you know, how possible things are and how it just takes patience and perseverance. So that was a real turning point for me in realizing what I wanted to do with my life. I had kind of fulfilled one of my biggest goals. I traveled a lot during my early 20s. And then I I thought, what do I want to do next with my time? Hmm. You know, and I think being away from Ireland having this pride in where I'm from and how beautiful and magical the language is and the culture and how people appreciate that and respect it around the world. I was like, I want to teach our native language. You know, my grandmother um, at that stage was in her 90s and we were really close and I would call her and it was difficult for her to hear me speaking English on the phone. But if I switched to Irish, she could right. have a full conversation. Yeah. And she didn't really have Alzheimer's or dementia or anything, but she would be a bit forgetful and her yeah. hearing was terrible. But somehow Irish just kind of woke her up. Yeah. And it was always her dream to see me on TV. <laughs> wow. So in a way, I'm I'm living her dream now, you know, Instagram. Now. I'm on a screen anyway. But so yeah, I had an Irish teacher. Um, I went to an all-girls school. So he was one of the only men in the building and everyone fancied him. And he was <laughs> okay Mr. Hackett um, and he was a nice guy but you know we asked him why did you go into teaching and he said yeah. June, July yeah. and August girls June, July and August so I, I don't know if he was there for the for the Irish teaching but um, everyone went to the Gwaeltox basically or got grinds because there wasn't a lot of understanding going on in school like many Irish schools and when I talked, I really connected with the language. I thought, you know, first of all, there were boys there and coming from an all girls school, that was quite exciting. And you'd be going to the Cayley and playing football and going to the beach all through Irish. But I went to a very strict one. So they actually kicked me out. I was 13 years old right. and I spoke one sentence in English and they sent me home on the train with right. two lads who'd been drinking on the beach. And I was like, how am I being treated like a criminal right. when they're sent home? Yeah. yeah. And they'd be drinking. I do remember that old thing. I never went to the Gale though, but I remember hearing people that had been you know, kicked out for speaking English, like, you know, because it was pretty strict. You had to speak Irish when you were there, like, you know. Yeah. So you studied English, though, in, in university, you were talking about beforehand. Mm. What was it about um, English that you, you mentioned that you found it quite unf- unfulfilling? Yeah, so I think I had always enjoyed reading. I was an avid reader as a child. I loved writing, creative writing. And then after my English degree, 
you know, teaching English abroad was a great option because it let me travel. Yeah. And I loved teaching. I still do. I love teaching so much. But I think teaching English made me kind of reflect on the utility of it, how these people would come to me kind of desperate to learn English because they had to, because English is yeah. the lingua franca, because, you know, as a commercial language, I really thought their English was killing other languages. You know, English has mm. usurped other languages. And I didn't like the role I played in that, especially as an Irish person. And I just mm. thought, why can't I apply the skills I've learned on how to teach a language logically and really clearly to the Irish language? Because Irish isn't yeah. really taught in a patterned, logical way. People no. feel like they're dragged up like, okay, and now you need to write a, an essay about social problems in your area, but you don't really understand how to use the past tense. Yeah. Yeah. I found it really difficult to be honest, like Irish, because I, I handled French, but when it came to the Irish, I was like, okay, this is back to front. And it was really difficult. Like, you know, you mentioned there something that was really interesting about English ki killing languages. Mm -hmm. So talk to me what you know about that. So languages are dying every day around the world. And yeah. it is an effect of globalization and of focusing mostly on giving this dominance to English. And mm. for example, Irish is listed as definitely endangered. The next step yeah. is severely, then critically, then dead. So when you look at Irish from a perspective of trying to invigorate the language and trying to bring it back, we look at other countries like Wales, the Basque country, um, even New Zealand with Maori and see how effective they've been in revitalizing the language. So something needs to happen in Ireland, you know, with Irish. Mm. Like I was thinking before our call, actually, how broken the curriculum is in Ireland that yeah. children are learning poems and prose for their exams and they don't really understand them. And I thought if that time was spent effectively teaching children to embrace and enjoy the language and understand the language, they themselves would be able to write poems better or more meaningful to them, yeah. more relevant by the age of 18, because they'd be fluent. So then yeah. it gives people this mindset and this misconception that Irish is really difficult and impossible. But it's not the mm. case at all. The more I delve into Irish, I realize it's so satisfyingly consistent for example, it only has 11 irregular verbs. English has about 220. Yeah. It only has, you know, it doesn't have a word for yes or no. We answer with the verb. It's got this beautiful, rhythmic, musical quality. And especially if you're growing up in Ireland, it'll be easier to learn because we're basically speaking Irish using English words. Yeah. But what is it about, uh, and this is a, a kind of a rhetorical question in some ways, but what is it about retaining the language that's so important? How does that integrate with our culture? I think it's that Ireland has a relatively new independence. And Ireland mm. has been kind of, you know, obviously oppressed and been through the wars, etc. And maybe now is a time to emerge in this strength of who are we and what is Irishness? Because yeah. We have a booming tech industry, you know, fantastic scientists, pretty strong educational sector, tourism industry. And yet the Irish are seen as kind of drunken louts, you know, funny, but maybe our culture is tied up with leprechauns and, you know, to a certain amount, day. Yeah. And I think if we really harness the power of the language, that's what's really given Ireland its music and its literature. It's identity. I mean, like we're all over the world at the moment with, you know, Sinead O'Connor passing. And, yeah. you know, she was extremely passionate about her Irishness. I don't know what her perspective was on the Irish language, um, but I think she sung a couple of songs, Oscailga, yeah. um, in her career. So I guess the, the retention of the language and it's kind of correlation to our identity. We're aware of that. 
but it was actually, I was speaking to my next door neighbor, um, there a couple of months ago and he explained to me that it was his dad was alive at the time of our independence. When you put it into the context of generations, you kind of go, okay. So it's so new and we're still kind of processing what that means. Like, and they say we only got back on our feet in the sixties in Ireland. Yeah. Um, but I think in some ways we're still only getting back on our feet. We still haven't found what it means to be Irish. We lost an awful lot, um, during those 800 years when the British ruled us, like, you know, mm-hmm. we're, at, we're at a crucial point is what I'm hearing from you. Um, and what we do next. So if you imagine that I had a magic wand, it's not a magic wand. It's a, it's a, it's a pen. But if I was able to go boom and make you, um, I don't know what the Irish is for the, the, the feminine of Taoiseach. Do you know? Still Taoiseach. Yeah, Chief. Taoiseach. Yeah. So you're Taoiseach of Ireland and uh, everyone is really happy. Molly's going to be running the country. What would you do? <laughs> <laughs> so everyone on get, get used to this. Molly's running the country now. Um, listen up. <laughs> what, what would you do? to um, introduce well, more Irish? I think the main thing is a shift in perspective and mindset. You know, the method is there for learning Irish. I've designed this way that people really can learn the language. And it's not as difficult as everyone thought. But the major overhaul would be in how we think about the language and how we accept yeah. it and embrace it. So I would do a lot of work into working through the shame and fear and resentment that people hold on to. You know, we might be the only country in the world that has been traumatized by learning our own language. So making it so that mistakes are normal, you know, you're only going to get it wrong before you get it right. Everyone just working through that kind of, who cares? Like, do we need to be fluent before we start speaking? No, No. you can just even add grow more, big love at the end of your messages. You know, you can write your shopping list in Irish and look it up, look up the word and then forget it and look it up again and forget it. Yeah, I would say, you know, bringing bilingualism into schools, making it so that sport is through Irish, things that are really fun and positive. And so children have this association and parents too. Yeah. And doing away with exams. I think exams come from this kind of factory worker mentality that we're having to test you because to, to yeah. work out whether you learned something instead of learning something should be the proof should be being able to spontaneously creatively confidently speak even if yeah. you're making mistakes so it's amazing how we, we're scripted in Irish basically yeah. if someone asks a question that you haven't prepared for it's like you know just anxiety overload instead oh. of understanding the structures and it's very yeah, doable the, basic, the foundations Yes, like, oh, I, I I couldn't tell you what my foundations in Irish were. It was probably counting like to ten, and yeah, even I haven't done it since I left school because like, I was living in Australia and, and so forth. The only time I really leaned into it was when I was traveling with other Irish people, and we might see a Colleen Holan, which is a yes. good looking girl, and we were like, "They are Kanish." I don't even know if that's right, but they would get the point across, and I was like, "Look over there." Yeah. <laughs> it was Colleen Olin and, and they'd be like okay you know girl and nice so we'd be like okay it was beneficial at that point but um, I'm keen to learn about more you know the, the killing of the you know English language being used to maybe not intentionally to kill languages but are there other countries in the world that are at the same level as us what they've been done to reinvigorate the language and its adoption mm-hmm. You mentioned Maui. Um, yeah. Maori, sorry, I think I'm saying, I'm, oh, I think it's Mafi actually isn't it the proper proper term. Because mm-hmm. people in New Zealand are going to send me an email now and they're like, Jerry, oh. this is how you say it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but w- what are they doing to reinvigorate the language? I think the major difference uh, is you can see in Catalonia and places like that, that they make it more useful in a way that you need the language to get into certain government positions and uh, public service kind of jobs and that it's actually used in daily life, that people who work in the post office, the guards, teachers, nurses, all use the language and there's a place for that. It's not in a way seen as such a minority language. 
for example, I lived in the Basque country and there all the kids, most of the kids go to school and it's just Basque the whole day. And then they might speak Spanish with their parents at home. Right. And a lot of their games are really well preserved, like Pelota, I think it's called. And it's just made more, it's normalized and it's integrated into their life. And it's a real pride thing. And I don't know why it's been the opposite in Ireland. Yeah. You know, I I mean, it's in all our signposts. Yeah. I mean, in some ways, like the Irish government, if if there were a third person on this call, they'd say, well, we've introduced it on all the signposts. We've, you know, we give alternate languages, um, you know, English on one side, Irish on another. You can apply for government services in our native language and ATM functions. I'm thinking off the top of my head, you can do it off scale. Yeah. Um, but yet it still seems to be on the decline. Exactly. And, and I see policies that are like, oh, we'll protect the Gwaeltucks at all costs and we'll protect this and that and preserve this. But I think the only time it's going to change is when Irish people feel okay with someone saying to them, on will Gwael Gagat, have you got Irish? And they can say, ta or Neil or Kupla Fuckle, yes, sir. Well, you know, I do, I don't, a couple of words, yeah. and not have this panic. Yeah. Because... It's so common that you'd say to someone, oh, you know, have you any Irish? And they're like, oh, sure, I wouldn't have a word of Irish. I, I only learned it for 14 years at school. And even Irish teachers themselves. I went to an event and I heard it was a, an embassy event. And there was this woman there who had taught Irish for years. And I was a bit like, OK, she's going to speak Irish to me. And even I have that kind of, boom, you know, what's going to happen yeah. here? And then. She grabs me by the arm and says, Molly, don't you dare speak a word of Irish to me. Really? She was like, I'm out of practice. Um, you know, I haven't spoken Irish in years. And I was like, okay. But where is the... Not? Yeah. yeah it's it's a real mindset thing. 100%. It's like a jam. If you look at musicians, they get up and they just start to jam and play. Like, you know, and yeah. it's that mindset of being comfortable. You're in a safe environment to, to try again. Exactly. Like, you know, and I teach so many international students and they just have a very different approach. They're like, hi guys, just joined the course. Um, maybe you've been here since last September, but I'll catch up in a few weeks. I'm just on module two, you know, yeah. very open, very cheerful about it. Very proactive. Yeah. And they don't mind making mistakes. They don't apologize for yeah. them. It's just, of course I'm making mistakes. I'm a learner. Everyone does. Do you think that's something to do with the fact that we hold a version of our own identity? And we probably know deep down we should. Yeah. Whereas if you're not from that um, perspective, if you're like, say, French trying to learn Irish, you're like, I know I'm going to be bad. I'm just learning a new thing. Whereas do you think there's something in that? That's a really good point. I think a lot of Irish people have that or maybe they move abroad and they realize, wow, I learned Swedish in two years. How do I not know my native language? Yeah. Yeah. So how hard is it? Come on, Molly, you've got me interested. I mean, all these Instagram yeah. posts, even you even spoke about uh, Ali G the other day. Yeah. You're speaking the language of the young people. And I say the young people, that's me, Bo Yaka Sha. So um, let's talk about that. Because I remember hearing years ago when, when Ali G, when I was in school, they were like, there's a correlation between that, that phrase and Oskelga. Tell us that yeah. story. That's a great that one. That it comes, yeah. So you remember Ali G saying, Bo Yaka Sha. And it's from Jamaican Patois. And yeah. apparently it comes from Buietus Legia. Thanks be yeah. to God. And the meaning is the same. He's saying it kind of like, praise be, you know, good life, yes. good stuff. And Cromwell sent thousands of Irish indentured servants to the Caribbean. And, like and they yeah. were working alongside the black slaves. And they yeah. apparently taught them a lot of Irish. Another one would be Iri the verb in Irish to mean get up or rise. And it can be connected to so many different collocations like, you know, to succeed, to give up and loads of different things. And they still use it in Jamaican Patois. They say, Iri. Wow. It's kind of, it's crazy how language can permeate each other. Isn't it really? Mm-hmm. Like they, they can influence yeah. so many different things. I mean, we still like in, in Australia, 
most people would be familiar with the phrase we're going to have the crack yeah and it's it's a very irish thing and do you know where that comes from i know it's obviously irish but but how is it permeated well all these other cultures this one is something we probably don't want to think about but the crack apparently comes from the word crack c r a k coming from middle english oh no yeah but we changed the spelling <laughs> yeah so it's got its roots in english yeah i think it meant racket or kind of hubbub kind of hustle and bustle yeah a sound or an atmosphere that makes sense but we made you know, the crack, as i'm speaking you know? as i'm speaking to I th- susie dent on countdown yeah. You are the Susie Dent to Irish that Thank she you. used to English. It's, <laughs> as, as I'm talking about, I think I can throw anything out to you and you're going to be able to give me a response. I appreciate that. I love Susie Dent. And a few people have said that to me. And I would love, you know, to have been on Countdown. Maybe I'll start a Countdown in Irish. Yeah. did it. not be fun? do Yeah, but you need Sean Locke. I only watched the Countdown, uh, Cats, the Cats version of Countdown. Um, have you seen that with Sean Locke and John? Don't think so. John Richardson? It's all these comedians who do it. Jimmy Carr fronts it. Um, it's not, you can check it out on YouTube. It's it's fantastic. But um, so let's talk about what you what you're doing. Like you know, so you, mm-hmm. you do these Instagram posts probably daily, is it? Yeah. So I do a reel every second day and a post with like ten flashcards, alternating them. So how do you do all of this? It's a lot of work, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah. But it's so worthwhile. I absolutely love it. I'm I'm learning a lot about, you know, the algorithm and how to grab people's attention and the whole storytelling aspect of it. Mm. And I love deep diving into the etymology and kind of weaving in the folklore. And mm. it's amazing. It's really heartwarming to see how people react to that. You know, people yeah. from all over the world who say, oh, my granddad used to say that. Or people give me a lot yeah. of ideas, to be fair. They'll write me a DM and they'll go, do you ever hear this phrase? <laughs> you know, my aunts always say this. And then I'll start researching it and be like, wow, that's so special yeah. that that has carried on for generations. Do you ever hear of the phrase scunty bunty? No. No, that's my, one of, an old lady used I'm... to call me her, her little scunty bunty. And scunty. I never knew what it meant. And um, my mom said she thought it might have been something to do with Irish. And he went, come here, you little squinty bunty. And I was like, what? And I was only when I get older. Like, she also used to call me the F word. Like, you know, she's (laughs) your your little F. And it's only years later that I was like, well, probably not appropriate. But the squinty bunty one was always, uh, you know, made me kind of ponder what what she meant. She's long gone, unfortunately, to ask her. But there's probably loads of those phrases from the older generations that are being passed down. And we're somewhat confused. Do you have any other ones that you have from um, kind of uh, from your reels that you're able to recount for us? Yeah, for example, you know, in Liverpool, people call it the Republic of Liverpool because there's so many Irish yeah, there. So many and Irish they say, Tara Chuck. And Tara comes from Tour Ada, meaning take care. Right. And even Chuck, kind of like chicken, you know, in Australia, you'll hear this a lot as well. Yeah. It comes from apparently T-I-O-C, Chuck, that Irish farmers would call their chickens saying Chuck, Chuck. And it would be ah. something to kind of, yeah, come mimic. Come here, come here, come here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, because Chucky would be crazy. the future tense of to come. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because like, it is very popular in Australia, like especially with, with people who are true blue, as I say, in Sydney and, and everywhere else. They'd be like, um, could I check? Um, uh-huh. it's really, it's fascinating to hear that, like, you know, so you're, you have a different style of, of learning. Um, mm-hmm. how does that differ to what the general curriculum does in Ireland to teach Irish? Um, I think. What are you doing? Are you doing dances? From... Cause you mentioned you do <laughs> dances as well. To be honest, I don't, I know there are so many talented and brilliant teachers, but I think yeah. working with the curriculum like that really doesn't help. So what I love to do is kind of start with a lead in, like something memorable, something that you can hang on and relate to and connect with. So a story about, you know, let's say if you've an, an Irish mammy or daddy, you've probably heard them say, why have you a puss on you? Get that puss off your face. You know, if you're yeah, being yeah. pretty grumpy. 
And then everyone can kind of laugh at it or relate to it and go, oh yeah, I've heard that. Why? Because puss comes from a pouted mount in Irish. And then you might hear, you know, something else related to mouth. So everything is kind of together. For example, like to, we, you know, Irish has faded off our tongues, but we're going to gobble it back up. Gobble comes from gub, be. Right. You know, doon the gob, shut your beak or Doom shut your gob. mouth. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of linking them so that you remember them better. I remember having yeah. a student who said he was learning weather items, vocabulary in Irish and gamala is cloudy. And yeah. he was wondering, how should I remember this? Well, scam, Allah. So Allah in the skies is scamming the earth with the clouds. Right. So this is a really effective learning tool, you know, and I think also letting students sit in their discomfort for a moment and kind of stretch their minds and try to nearly struggle through to the answer instead of giving it to yeah. them. There's a lot of this in school where people are fed information. This is the correct answer instead of what do you think or yeah. work it out like how cool would that be if etymology was more of a subject in schools like it's fascinating absolutely within design um we talk about this it's an academic term it's called the first shitty draft where you just get something done like you earn i think ernest hemingway said that the hardest part of writing is just that blank page and it's so true it's you just get something to the point of where you can actually critique it and provide feedback Whereas if you stare at that blank page and you don't attempt, you're just still. So you can't steer a parked car is the other way of looking at it. And it's just about giving it a go and being being willing to be poor mm -hmm. is is kind of what I'm hearing through that. Like, you know. So Molly, you've got this online school. I'm I'm on the website here uh, at yeah. the moment. Um what does it look like when people sign up? Like I'd love to give people uh, an introduction to yeah. to what you offer. So it's called irishwithmolly.com and I have two courses. So one is for beginners, perfect yeah. for people starting from scratch or maybe refreshing their Irish after years. Maybe they want to become a primary school teacher or they're a parent of a kid in a Gaelic school. And it brings yeah. you through the absolute basics of the language. So I've designed this kind of features of the language module that a lot of people are like, God, I never knew that, despite yeah. maybe even being at intermediate level. And then it brings you through the tenses, different vocabulary. So there's about 55 structured videos over 18 hours. So it's all self-paced. You can learn wherever, whenever suits you. There is over 800 exercises, over 100 quizzes, downloadable PDFs, my daily support, an open Zoom room. So we have a 24-7 Zoom room to converse. And I was on it last night with a few people. It was hilarious. Sounds it was Cork versus Dublin. So people from all over the world, I've over 2000 students on it now and people are just logging in from everywhere, you know, from Alaska, New Zealand, Morocco. It's incredible to feel this appetite for Irish. Then there's an intermediate course. Um, well, what's the live another... Zoom? I've never heard of a live Zoom room. Yeah. So it's open constantly. People are online right now. We also have a Telegram group, one for beginners, one for intermediates and just sharing you know, couple of fuckle, maybe a couple of words about their day or asking questions, sharing films in Irish and books. So it's a great way for people to feel part of something and to yeah. know I'm not alone. You know, everyone's trying their best. And, you know, the beauty of it is there's lifetime access as well. So it's not like you have to finish by this deadline or yeah. you'll get kicked out of the course or anything like that. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. Awesome. So it's... um. Yeah, it's just been a really beautiful kind of burgeoning community that fills me with a lot of joy. You know, it feels like yeah. friends, you know, everyone is there you enjoying themselves people. and adding to the experience. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, keep doing what you're doing, Molly, um, because it's been fascinating watching your channel grow. I'm just looking at it now, you've got 125,000 followers on Instagram, is that right? About that, yeah, Some, I think something like that. I think oh, well, more than on, across the two channels. Yeah, you're on TikTok. Yeah. You're on TikTok as well, like which yeah. is just insane. Like you know, anyone who's got more than I've got 150 people on Instagram, my personal Instagram, and I'm, yeah. I'm like, that's too many. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's it's mind boggling sometimes when people recognize me. I'm like, whoa, yeah. You so see if you my have face that, every day. I'd say I'd say you could definitely you'd be stopped in the street. Yeah, it has happened. Even in yeah. Austria, to be honest, I was in the middle of the Austrian Alps and the guy putting really? on my ski boots said, 
uh, do you teach Irish online? And I was like, yeah. No way. It was weird. That is yeah. so cool. And I noticed um, when a good friend uh, and someone who's been on the podcast, Mark Geary, um, follows you uh, as well. Like, you know, and there's been a lot of people like I know Marquette Glova as well follows you on, on Instagram as well. So it's there's a lot of people interested in what it means to be Irish mm-hmm. who are popular amongst the, the creative community in Ireland following and learning and i think it's really powerful to see other people in that sort of position in irish culture to support what you're doing because there's yeah. not too many other people doing it like and it's it's coming from the heart that's the bit that comes through it's not a okay. case of you like you see a niche in the market you're like i'm gonna capitalize yeah. on this this is something you're really passionate about so i'm delighted yeah. to have you and direct people towards the work that you're doing molly thanks a million oh. jerry no worries. If so, if people want to reach out to you, what, what's the best way for people to do that? Yeah. So Irish with Molly on Instagram or TikTok and Irish with Molly at gmail.com. If you want to send me an email or the website is Irish with Molly.com. OK, awesome. Listen, thanks so much for your time. Cheers. Slán. Haha, <laughs> Slán Gafal. <laughs> <laughs>